I've also got a handout on Pentecost. Uh, explains a little bit about it. But I didn't have time to review my handout. So a few things have changed in the handout since last year. And I'll briefly talk about that here in a few minutes. So Pentecost Shavuot. Okay. Does everybody know the meaning of Pentecost? What happened at Pentecost in the past? It's when God did something in the earth. He came down from heaven and gave the Ten Commandments. He came down from heaven and gave the Holy Spirit. These are huge events in man's history. Uh, Think about it. Without knowing the Ten Commandments, we would have no standard as to moral and civil rules to live by. You could just live any way you wanted if there was no standard. So thank God for his standard, right? And then uh, peoples over the thousands of years have tried to model governments after uh, Judeo-Christian type principles. You know, Holy Spirit was given uh, uh, in Acts, and now we have our comforter or friend to help us understand the written word. We got your Bible, and uh, I know I read, I think I read the Bible through twice, completely, cover to cover, when I was a teenager uh, or young adult. And it made sense in a way, but as far as getting wisdom from it, I really didn't get much wisdom. But later, as I dedicated myself to the Lord, He started to show me in His Word what his word was, you know, and so that was a blessing. So two things have happened in the past. The Torah, the mouth, Ten Commandments, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Is God going to do something else on Pentecost? Yes. It's unfinished. It's not finished yet. And I say that's when he comes to get his bride, his set-apart people. I, I believe that's when he comes to get his bride. So we'll talk briefly about that here shortly. There are three feasts every year and uh, where you harvest the food to eat for the year. Uh, The Feast of uh, Unleavened Bread, which is the barley harvest. The Feast of uh, Oaths, or Feast of Weeks, which is the wheat harvest. And then the Feast of Tabernacles in the fall, and God says that everyone is to attend these three feasts. And there's meaning in why you are to attend these three feasts because it has, uh, that's how God collects people for the kingdom according to these three feasts. Okay? Opening prayer. To the, I'll do the opening prayer. Father God, I just thank you for Shavuot. And I thank you, Lord, that you do miracles on Shavuot, on Pentecost, and Lord, if it's your will, you may do a miracle here today, and I thank you for that. In ancient times, uh, you taught your people to stay up all night and read their Torah, read their Bible all night to expect something miracle, some kind of miracle to happen on this day, on Pentecost. So you taught them to do that in the past, and I think you still want us to do it today. You still want us to expect As we count up to day 50, when you're going to do something mighty in the earth. And I think it's close at hand. If not this year, some year soon. I thank you for Shavuot. I thank you for these people that are here. And I thank you for the baptisms that we may do here shortly. I just bless you, Father God, for all that you've shown uh, YIC and your people at YIC. And what you're going to show us. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen. Okay, now we're going to the Shema. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Matuto Leolam 
Ba'ed. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is our Elohim. Yahweh is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And the Ve'ahavta, love your neighbor as yourself. Thank you. You can be seated. Pentecost is Shavuot. So I just have a few things in the handout I'll mention. Uh, it explains the historical meaning of this date, but also the future meaning of this date. Then we'll ha- take a break, do the ironic benediction. We'll, have a, we'll eat a little bit, you know, and then we'll go to the lake. Pentecost is Shavuot. So, like I said, I didn't have time to... Um, really review my handout from last year because things change in a year's time. I've always thought being changed mortal to him. See, we can't go to heaven unless you have a spirit body. You have to have a spirit body. Mortal body can't go. Okay? So, I've heard people say that, well, when Jesus was raised from the dead, he's the first fruits. He's the first one to get an immortal body. And right now the Bible says he's in heaven. But they say the graves were open and other people were seen in the city that had died. They were resurrected. There are three harvests. So see if I can make this clear. There's a barley, the wheat, the grapes. The grape harvest is kind of rough blood in the streets that's when uh it's kind of rough that harvest but there'll be souls for the kingdom in that gathered and that's when they have to make the robes white gathered for the kingdom then there's the barley that harvest represents someone without sin yeshua is the only man without sin so he went to heaven then a um, month later, 50 days later from his resurrection, 50 days later is the, the two loaves with sin, but repented. They sinned, but they repented. So if these men that were resurrected right after Yeshua was resurrected, they had sin. Don't you see it? They... Jesus is the only one without sin at Barley. So they didn't. They may have been resurrected, but they did not go to heaven. They have to wait till the wheat harvest to be part of the two loaves. So I believe they were resurrected. And uh, people saw them kind of like Lazarus. And then they had another death. Later on, they died again. Okay. That's how I look at it. But there's so many Torah teachers, they say, oh, no, they went to heaven, and, and they're the 24 elders, and no, I don't think so. They, they sin. They can't not be in heaven. Okay. But to be in heaven, you have to be resurrected. Your flesh has to die, and then you put on immortality, and then your spirit can live forever. Okay. That's how it works. So on page one, um, oh, and the other thing I thought is that uh, there wouldn't be a change from mortal to immortal till after the second death, after the second death. You know, there's the first death, and then there's the second death, and then the lake of fire. There's the first death, there's a thousand-year rule, then the second, de- then then the lake, then the great white throne judgment, and then the lake of fire, uh, and the second death. So I always felt that to be changed from mortal to immortal, have because it said the the dead, the, those changed mortal to immortal, will not pro- proceed the ones who have died. So if you got to wait a thousand years because some other people are going to die at the you know, in the future, so you that that's being to be changed. You have to wait till after to then. But I think I was reading a little something into it. I think at Pentecost, 
the two witnesses are going to be raised from the dead. Okay, that's what I, this is in the handout. There are three resurrections. How many resurrections are there? I think there's three. Yeshua, the first one. Then at Pentecost, the second one, the two witnesses. And then I think after they die, some could be changed mortal to immortal. I believe that's 144,000 now. I've, in the past year, I've come to believe that that might happen then. Then you have a thousand years, and then, um, and people die during the thousand years, and uh, then after all of that, in the great white throne, uh, you have the second death, and then those who are living at that time, uh, if they're righteous, they can be changed mortal to immortal at that at that point. So. I figured that's when you had to, you had to wait till after the thousand years. But now I, I kind of believe uh, when it says you won't be changed mortal to immortal, you won't pre precede those who have died. I think it could apply multiple times. Where I before I was thinking it was just once at the end of the thousand years, and I could be wrong. But uh, anyway, so Exodus nineteen. Moses and Israel are separated from the world. Moses goes up in, up to Yahweh in a cloud, in the air. And 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 says that we're caught up in the air in a cloud. It's the same thing that happened to Moses. Yahweh, Yahweh you're on earth. You're not taken somewhere. You're on earth. Yahweh tells the people, you have seen what I did to Pharaoh, so keep covenant. You are a special treasure to me. The people of Israel said, all that Yahweh has said, we will do. But how many people that said a sinner's prayer are doing what Yahweh says to do today? How many people are keeping Pentecost? It's a, commanded, it's a commandment to, be, to celebrate somewhere. You can do it here, you can do it somewhere else. But how many are doing it? Uh, I, don't th I think very few, okay? Leviticus 23. That's why there are going to be a lot of tour keepers and Christians have to make the robes white. Follow me? Because I think he's, the two witnesses are going to be very clear. They're, they're going to say, you've got to keep Pentecost. You've got to keep trumpets, Yom Kippur, all this Old Testament stuff. You've got to do it. And so they're going to do it and, keep, and make the robes white. Leviticus 23. Count from first fruits of the barley. And the fiftieth day is Pentecost. The first fruits of the wheat shall be offered this day, because you will be summoned. I think that's a voice. Come up here, okay? Uh, whether it's the dead rising from the dead, or it's the uh, uh, people who are living changed mortal to immortal. Come up here. Numbers 28, in the day of the first fruits, Shavuot, Pentecost, when you offer a new present to the Lord, after you fulfill the seven weeks, you shall assemble for your son, but a voice on this day, have a holy convocation. That's what they were doing in Acts. They stayed up all night expecting God to do something, and the next day, the Holy Spirit with tongues of fire filled the room uh, with the Holy Spirit. And that happened. Down in Ezekiel, it says, I saw a great cloud and fire in the sky. And in the midst of it was a throne and a man on the throne. The glory of God spoke to me, a voice from the cloud. I, that just takes me to 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. So that's, that's what I think is about to happen. When the Lord comes... It's like it'll be a, a cloud. Acts 2. On Shavuot, the 50th day, we were all summoned, all in one accord, and a sound from heaven fell on the apostles. A bodily change, and I wrote this, and I think this is what I'm going to have to change in this handout. A bodily change from mortal to immortal does not happen at this event at Pentecost. I think it happens uh, later. Now I'm thinking it could happen at Pentecost, okay? We'll find out pretty soon, I think. And you read the details on page 3. Uh, 
there's some translations about the people who are living that they're all changed mortal to immortal. And some translations say not all people are changed mortal to immortal. Okay. So every year at Pentecost, I'm on page four, we are renewing, making an oath to do what Yeshua did. So that's what we this oath we've been doing for 49 days, today being day 50. We're saying to the Lord, I'm going to do what your son did. I'm just going to do what he did. Help me, help me do it. You know, help me figure out what he did so I can do it. We're making an oath. Deuteronomy 5.3, I make this oath, not only with your father, says Sinai, who died in the wilderness, but I make this oath with you who are alive today. And I have to change that to 2024. <laughs> so I'm saying, could your walk these past 50 days decide if Decide whether or not you are the bride. See? He's coming f for a bride without spot or wrinkle. So the past 50 days, I say, is very important. It really defines who the bride is. So I I'm saying there are three resurrections. One at, one at Barley, that's Yeshua. One at Pentecost, the ones who repented of their sin. And then one in tabernacles uh, when the blood's flowing from and the grapes of wrath and all that. Three resurrections. That's kind of what the hand is about. John 4, 32, page 6. There are still four months to the harvest. So they, everybody's talking about the harvest in the fall. But this verse says there's still four months to the harvest. He says, look, the fields are white already. That's Pentecost. It's the there's going to be a resurrection um, at Pentecost. That's what he's talking about there. And then facts about Pentecost uh, on page 6. This is what it's called historically. It's a feast of the harvest. Two mature loaves with sin but repentant. See, leaven or sin makes the dough rise. It's not flat like unleavened bread. Yeshua represents the unleavened bread. It's called the Feast of Oaths when we make a daily oath. How many people have made a daily oath, maybe read your Bible every day the past 50 days? How many people have done that? How many people in church have done that? A lot of people go to church, they don't read the Bible every day. Well, if we're making a daily oath, to me that sounds like daily reading your Bible. It's also called the Feast of Weeks. It's called the Day of the First Fruits, uh, the Day of Atzeret, the Day of Giving of the Torah, and to hearing the Ten Commandments read aloud. It's customary to eat dairy foods. Did anybody bring any dairy today? <laughs> um, I forget about that. Uh, King David died on Pentecost, and they say he will be resurrected on Pentecost. That fits the scenario on Pentecost, a resurrection, okay? And traditionally, the book of Ruth is read on Pentecost. Why? She's, a, she's not a DNA Israelite. Ruth is not a DNA Israelite. She's grafted in Romans eleven nineteen and has become a citizen of Israel when she says, your God shall be my God, and I will do what your God says. She's grafted in, and she's saying, I'm going to do the commandments, what God says to do. Uh, there's some interesting facts on page 7 about you sh uh, Israel being restored to a nation on Pentecost. Revelation 20, verse 5, I want to explain this verse just a little bit. It says, this is the first resurrection. That's what it says. I'm not saying that's incorrect, but in a way it is. It should say this is the completion of the first resurrection because Yeshua is the first resurrected person. So it started to pass over with Yeshua, but pretty soon at Pentecost it will be completed. That's the completion of the first resurrection. And it happens in Revelation, okay, when it's completed. Okay, just a little bit about Pentecost there, okay? What's well, an omer? 
making a daily oath to obey. You're to count the over Elmer. It's a commandment. Uh, if you don't do it, it's it is sin. Move the barley sheath over for day fifty. Who would like to move the barley sheath over? Come on down. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm moving the last barley sheaf over. 50 days have been counted off to Pentecost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's exciting. How many people in Upper Cumberland could say that? There are not enough teachers teaching Torah. That's the problem. Somebody, there are some out there claiming to teach Torah in there. They're just having a little get together with a little music. That's it. That's all they're doing. Stand and receive the name of the Lord. He wants to bless you. Maybe receive your miracle today. The day's not over. Not till sunset. You can receive your miracle one minute before sunset today, okay? And if you don't receive it, if you just do the tour like we teach here, you're still going to receive a miracle, okay? Yavareka Yahweh Vaish Mareka. Yair Yahweh Panoleka Ve Kaneka. Yasa Yahweh Panoleka Vesim Laka Shalom. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. That's peace. And our Hebrew lesson. Baruch Atah Yahweh Eloheinu Melech Halam Bore Mene Mesanot. Blessed are you, Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who creates all kinds of food.